we'll make the hull out of a milk carton, which is easy to cut, bend, glue, and paint. And of course, it's already waterproof. And juice cartons work just as well. Ask your instructor for a milk carton. You might have to cut off the bottom. And you might also have to pull open the top. When you look at the inside corners, you'll see that one of the corners is completely different because it has an overlap. Cut open the milk carton on this corner. It will look like this. Now cut off the spout part of the milk carton. It's too bendy to use. Ask your instructor for a hull pattern. Cut strips off the side, close to the pattern, but not actually going into the pattern. Do this on both sides. This is what it will look like. If you hold the pattern paper up to the light, notice that you can still see the pattern even if you flip the paper over. Put sticky tape donuts in the four corners of the pattern on the blank side, not on the print side. The pattern is going to go on the milk carton in a very precise way. This dashed line must be placed directly over a fold in the milk carton. On both sides of the pattern. Here's a close-up of how the dashed line is placed directly over the fold in the milk carton. It's very important to get that lined up as you tape it down. Cut out the pattern on the outside solid lines. Work slowly and carefully. Do a good job. After you cut the outside solid lines, don't forget to cut the two inside solid lines. These are very short. Make sure you stop when you get to the dashed lines. After you've cut out the pattern, this is what it should look like. Use the sharp corner of a table to bend all the dashed lines. Then fold it more and make sure the bend is actually on the line.
one of the dashed lines is already folded for you because you put it over the fold in a milk carton. However, there are four more that have to be folded on the sharp corner of a table. Two on the outside and two in the middle. Ask your instructor for a single edge razor and a piece of scrap cardboard to protect the table. Cut out the rectangle. The best way to do it is to not try to cut the whole thing in one pass. Notice how I'm using about four or five passes to get through all the way. Crease the milk carton hard. I know I said not to use the ruler like this for the aluminum, but for the milk carton, it does the job. Once you flip the carton over and do the other side, then you can take off the paper pattern and all the tape that was on it. Next, staple the flaps that you just creased. I suggest putting the first staple right at the natural bend in the milk carton. Put two additional staples on one side of that first staple. And two additional staples on the other side of that first staple. The same thing to the other flap on the other side. It should look like this when you're finished. With any pair of pliers, squish flat all the staples you just put in. There are three reasons for doing this. The flattened staples are stronger, they practically disappear when you paint them, and you're not likely to catch your finger on the end. In the next step, you will staple the front of the boat. By the way, the front of the boat is also known as the bow. Notice that the edges are uneven here. Make sure you even them out before you start stapling. Make the first staple near the top, parallel to the edge. Notice that the staple is close to the edge, but not on the edge. Flip the boat over. Put the next staple in the same place, only going in the opposite direction. If the second staple collides with the first staple and doesn't go in, just pull it out with a pair of pliers and try again. And when you do get it right, use the pliers to flatten the staples. These two staples will take an enormous amount of stress. As you widen the boat, 
to actually look like a boat. Put three more staples in below the first two. These don't have to be doubled up because they don't take as much stress. But do flatten these staples too. The next step is to glue the back of the boat, which is also known as the stern. Although you could have these side flaps on the outside, most people think they look better on the inside like this. Before you can glue them, you need to sand all surfaces to be glued. In this case, one side of the flaps and one side of the stern. In the video, we're pushing the flaps out of the way and sanding the stern first. Or whatever works. It's easier to sand the flaps if you can somehow back them up against something solid. When you actually glue, make sure that the edge of the stern lines up with the side of the boat. Not like this, and not like this, but just even. Like this. Push the flaps so the glue will not run off them. You can glue both sides at one time, or you can glue them separately. If you glue them at the same time, put on more glue than you think you need. It's better to have too much glue than too little. It will fill in the gaps so that the boat doesn't leak, and you can always scrape off the extra that squeezes out. Make sure you're using the low temp hot glue, or you could get a bad burn. Use pliers to squeeze out the extra glue. We use glue instead of staples on the back because this connection does not take as much stress as the front, and the glue should make this part of the boat waterproof. You can scrape off the glue with a fingernail. We reshaped the boat for several reasons beside how it looks. If you make the deck, the hull has to be wide enough for it to fit. Even if you don't plan to make the deck, the boat is not stable when it's narrow like this. Earlier, you should have put in two staples going in from opposite sides at the top of the bow and flatten them with pliers. That's because it has to be able to take the stress there as you widen the hull. If it rips open, you'll have to staple it again. Use your thumbs to widen the hull in the middle. Then notice how the sides toward the bow are still straight. Concentrate on one side at a time to curve them. Try not to put too much pressure on the staples in the bow. The hull is wide enough when it stays open by itself at about three and a half inches 
or around 90 millimeters at the line which used to be the corner of the carton. The back of the boat shouldn't leak because the glue blocks leaks, but the stapled front is likely to leak. See how there's a little crack that you can see through? It's a whole lot easier to stop the leak now than when the engine is in because the engine blocks you from getting to it. See if you can put the engine in the boat. If there's too much hot glue on the bendy part of the straw, you'll have to make the rectangular hole a little bigger with a finger or something. Don't actually start gluing in the engine with the hot glue until you understand from these directions what position the engine will be in when the glue cools. I speak from experience that most of the hard to fix leaks in the bottom of the boat are here because once the glue hardens the straws prevent you from getting to it to fix it. So put a big blob of low temp hot glue behind the straws. I guess I put too much on here but I can scrape off the extra. I prefer not to put the straws completely flat against the bottom of the boat. It seems a little easier to prime that way. So I put a pencil or pen under to space them. Make sure the straws go down the middle of the boat, not off to one side. Seal with glue around the rest of where the straws go in. Try to make it fairly thin and smooth so your boat cuts through the water. Did you save the cardboard wedge that you set the angle of the engine with? Use it to set the angle again on the inside of the boat. Or just hold it so the end of the engine is two and a half inches or 63 millimeters from the bottom of the boat. Squeezing hot glue on the inside might be enough to soften the glue on the bendy part. This is a good place to have lots of hot glue because the weight at the bottom of the boat makes the boat more stable. If hot glue doesn't heat the bend enough to adjust the angle, you can pour some hot water in the front of the boat to soften the hot glue. The water has to be really hot and it takes about a minute. Get the angle, then putting cold water quickly hardens the glue again. If there's a leak in the bottom, it's easy to find if you push the boat down a little into the water. Here you can see it leaking from the front. Here it's leaking from both the front and where the straws go through the bottom. Often it helps to glue a couple of coins to the bottom of the boat. Weight at the bottom stabilizes the boat. If the boat's leaning one way or another, you can locate the coin accordingly and counterbalance the tilt. Don't forget you still have to prime the engine every time before using it. Make a hook in the candle holder and hook it to the stern of the boat so the candle doesn't slide around. You don't have to make the deck, but it looks nice, especially if you paint it.